Welcome back to another one of Nathan's commentary video series, uh, politics, life, society, whatever you want, Nate's got it. So today I'm going to ask you again to like and subscribe and give it a share if it's something that interests you. Today, Nate wants to tell you or talk to you about CIA and some psyops that they've done. Yeah, yeah, well, when um, I've always been very interested in the affairs of the Central Intelligence Agency because I've always been very oppositional to American policy and I view the Central Intelligence Agency as integral in American war policy in particular. So when the CIA dumped a whole bunch of files about six or seven years ago um, and I learned that we could access all these um, declassified documents, I was right onto it. Um, and at the time it wasn't about learning about psychics and mysticism, but once I got into it and I discovered the CIA's psychic experiments and the history of psychic experiments, I became absolutely fascinated in the subject. Um, and I'm very sceptical because I understand that it doesn't make sense from a materialist perspective that an individual could see another location that, that then they're removed from in their mind's eye. There's no way for information to transfer from one location to a person's mind. So this idea that a person could clairvoyantly view uh, another, the other side of the planet or another planet or another location doesn't seem right in materialist thinking. So I'm very sceptical that clairvoyance could exist. However, I get very excited when I think that clairvoyance could exist because it starts to talk about like un like universal consciousness and, and the idea that we're all connected across the universe and I see it as evidence of that. Um, but, you know, it was interesting, the CIA funded psychic experiments for about 27 years uh, and the Russians funded psychic experiments as well. Um, the Russians had a, had a telekinetic woman uh, named Nina Kulagina uh, and she could move objects with uh, her aura, with, you know, and according to documents, the CIA looked into human auras as well. And the understanding, I think, from they had from some of the documents I read is that people can have people have a magnetic field. And I think we, from what I recall, we do all have a magnetic field. Go and check that. But some people can have an enhanced magnetic aura which allows them to manipulate objects without touching them. And Nina Kulagina was the purported Russian psychic who had this ability uh, and she also uh, could perceive things that were in other locations. She was supposedly clairvoyant. But there's a lot of question about whether the Russians just hoaxed her uh, to make it look like they had psychic uh, spies because a lot of it... A lot of this to and fro between the CIA and the KGB in the Cold War, a lot of it was they were hoaxing each other, trying to psychological warfare trick each other into thinking they had a, a, an advantage on the other team. So they would often hoax things just to trick the opposing agency. Um, but the CIA had Yuri Geller, famous magician, uh, stage performer and as a purported psychic. Uh, and... And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to talk about Yuri Geller's spoon mending because spoon mending's like, oh, yeah, where you can bend a spoon with your magnetic aura, who cares? Um, but I've had a look at Yuri Geller's uh, remote viewing sessions that he did uh, at Stanford Research Institute with um, CIA-funded uh, professors. Uh, and what I want to say about Yuri Geller's clairvoyant readings that he did for the CIA is um, it's not a question of whether Yuri Geller gets the target right like he does get the target right so this is the thing it's a question of whether he's a con man and whether he's getting this information in some more practical realistic way and misleading the experimenter because if you look at his remote viewing examples and there's about five or six of them on Yuri Geller's website. So you can go to Yuri Geller's website and you can find all the declassified uh, material from the CIA because he has it on his website. And if you look at his remote viewing sessions, the thing is he does actually get the targets correct. So it's just a question of whether he's a con man. It's not a question of whether he gets the targets correct, he does. Like on one occasion that I recall off the top of my head, the... Uh, experimenter drew a picture of the devil and Yuri Geller was asked and put it in an envelope in another room on the other side of the facility and Yuri Geller was asked to de depict what the picture was and he drew the Bible. Now he didn't draw the devil but he drew religious symbology so of all the things 
in the world, you know, he could he could have drawn an apple, he could have drawn a car, he could have drawn a spaceship, he could have drawn a bicycle. Um, but of all the things in the world, in response to a picture of the devil, he drew the Bible. So very intimately connected these two ideas. So it's as if he got a sense, uh, some real sense of what the image was, because it was related. It was related. So he could have drawn anything in the world, but he drew something related. Um, and he was asked to draw a horse, and he drew a camel. You know, very similar shape very similar form so again very very close and there were a couple of other images go and look at them um, where he draws uh, things very very similar to what the target is uh, and this was the case with a lot of the remote viewers um, there was one remote viewer who was a picture of a wind the location was a wind farm um, with wind turbines um, and, 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 and he was asked to remote view the target uh, and he drew all these towers. Now, they didn't have, um, they didn't have the wind turbine on them, but they were, it was a hill of towers just like the target location. So very, very similar. So the thing about these remote viewers, it's really a question of whether they're con artists because if you look at some of, some of the remote viewing sessions, and I've been over hundreds of them, many of them, they do accurately depict what the target location is. Um, so I'm really interested in CIA psychic experiments that's possibly evidence that ESP exists but then you get these ridiculous ones like you know this guy was asked he the, the target he was given and they're not given any knowledge of the target they're just uh, um, the, the target he was given was Mars one million years ago um, and, and what he described in his psychic session was he described uh, a, a dead arid red wasteland with a dying people living on it. So now, the target was Mars a million years ago, so that would imply that if the remote viewer's clairvoyant reading is in any way correct, then we can speculate based on that, that a million years ago Mars was populated with a population who were dying off. Um, now, I don't know if I accept that. I can be pretty open-minded because Mars looks like a dead planet and it looks like it might have had a very different history, which we can't see. But, you know, the Mars rover's been out there for a while, hasn't found any bones or anything. As my support worker, Alan, said it can't really dig. But, you know, we, we certainly don't see any me mega megalithic structures on Mars. Um, so, you know, it's pretty far-fetched to say there was a civilization on Mars, but that's what the remote viewer claims so some people would use that immediately to say it's all ridiculous uh you know there was you know but maybe there was a civilization on mars um but i definitely encourage people to be open-minded um, and if you want to you know go if you want to question the cia's psychic research go and view the documents and look at it yourself you know i looked at Dozens, hundreds of remote viewing sessions. Remote viewing is ESP. That's what they call it. It's psychic clairvoyance. And I looked at hundreds of these sessions and I became convinced by the end of it that there was something to it. Now, I want to point out further, um, I contacted a woman on LinkedIn about three years ago. Her name is Jessica Utz and she's a public um, CIA agent. She lives a public life. She acknowledges that she worked for the Central Intelligence Agency for many years. She's a statistician um, and she conducted a review of the CIA's psychic research uh, for Congress or whoever ordered the review. Uh, now, there were two reviewers, her and another man, and he dismissed remote viewing and she stands her ground that remote viewing is real and that there is evidence that remote viewing is real. And when I contacted her on LinkedIn, Jessica Arts is her name, I just basically said to her, um, look, is this real? Because for me it's a very spiritual, religious question and, and it's about like believing in the force like a Jedi. You know, sometimes I think I'm a Jedi. You know, is there a force that connects the universe, a spirit that runs through everything and can we have clairvoyant visions of things across the stars? So for me it's a very spiritual question and I want an answer as to whether ESP exists. So I asked Jessica Arts, who's a CIA agent, I said, look, just tell me, what's your view on this? Do you really believe that this works? And she came back to me and she never gave me any other responses after that, but she came back and said, yes, her view is that the CIA's research is evidence that ESP and psychic phenomenon exist. So that's coming from her who worked on the program for many years. But the CIA's, the American government's formal position at the moment seems to be uh, very dismissive of the work that the uh, 
the remote viewing experimenters did and they, they certainly don't acknowledge that there's any evidence that ESP exists. But there's a lot of debate about it if you get into the subject of whether the CIA proved anything about ESP phenomenon. Um, as I said, for me, it's a very religious, spiritual question and I'd like an answer. Uh, but if you're interested, you know, there's other psychic research you can look into and it's, it's, it's a subject that gets scoffed at by scientists, but I think scientists need to be more open-minded. So if you have an interest in ESP and psychic phenomenon, I want to alert you there are formal universities and research institutes that have conducted ESP experiments and I've viewed many of them. So I encourage you, if you want to believe in psychics, don't just go to some psychic down at the mall who's a scam artist who wants to tell you she can predict your future. You know, Do some solid research into the institutes that have actually studied ESP, look at the experiments and conclude for yourself whether you think ESP is real from a scientific perspective. So go and do that guys and don't forget to like and subscribe and share the video. Thanks a lot.